They can't believe people saying they can't believe in the Bible because it was written by man. Well, let's examine how inconsistent that claim is for just a moment. All of the history books that we have was written by men. But you never hear people saying, I can't believe in Abraham Lincoln because our history books was written by men. Or I don't believe that Rome or Caesar existed because our history books was written by men. They only say it about the Bible. Not only that, if the Bible wasn't written by men, can we really trust it? Meaning, if God gave us the scriptures in a more miraculous way, will we really be able to trust the validity of the Bible? For example, take the LDS church, for example. They, they claim that the Book of Mormon was written by an angel named Moroni who wrote the Book of Mormon in, in gold tablets and put it in the ground and led Joseph Smith, their prophet, to these gold tablets. And he used Joseph Smith to translate this ancient text into English, and that's how we got the Book of Mormon. Therefore, there was no eyewitnesses. There isn't thousands of documentation to prove the, the, the Book of Mormon is true. We just got to take their word for it. But God used men throughout history, thousands of years, to write the scripture. And none of the stories contradict one another. You know how hard it is for the book of Isaiah not to contradict the book of John if the Bible wasn't true? That's because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. See, so, he, so, so here's the thing. God allowing men to write the Bible is a way to provide us with great evidence and great consistency. So stop denying the scriptures just because you want to worship the God. Mm. All right. What do you think? Mm, mm, mm. Powerful. Um, he 100% right. 100% on point. There's too many times where I've uh, Bible studies, research, or found out where the consistencies in the Bible from if you if you took everybody in the room and wrote and we all wrote something separate down and we put it together and it, and it it has a story in it like like uh the 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 list of the names in in the Bible that part where you know you're reading the list of the names the, the lineages this that and the third mm -hmm. but then each name means something and then when you take what the names mean it has a whole sentence that points to Jesus Christ and it's like there's no way that um that these different men would have been able to do this without the spirit of God. Mm. Um, and there's just, when you do surrender your life to Christ, when you do seek him with your whole heart, you start to have them times where you read the Bible and it's talking to you in a situation you going through right then and there. And there's no book like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, my, when I hear that, my first thought process is like, well, who else was going to write it? Like, how's, how are we going to get it? And right. the, <laughs> the, the second thought that come to my mind is like, um, you know, there's always that, well, the Bible or, or the, you know, it's, it's trying to control you or this, that, and the third. It's like, well, if if you wanted to try to manipulate, control me, you wouldn't have put it in a book. Because mm -hmm. this, like, my flesh don't, I love Jesus. I love the word of God. My flesh do not like sitting down reading no mm -hmm. book. Mm -hmm. I have to, I have to be still and really sit there and read this book and go in prayer and receive, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, man. Preston is right on point with it, so. Yeah, this type I, of talk get me excited. And I'm sorry, go ahead. I go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it, it's spot on, man. People just want to do whatever they want to do, and they want to find a reason to justify it. Mm -hmm. um, you talk about the Bible being written by men. All these people who, quote unquote, left Christianity, which I believe if you leave, you were never with us in the first place, according to Scripture. Um, you go listen to a YouTube video of somebody talking to us about something that appeals to your flesh, and you'll base your whole life off that video. But we got. 66 books here, <laughs> thousands of scriptures. They all lined up together and point one direction in different time periods, thousands of years apart. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to say that you can't believe in that. And then you'll say, well, it's been translated this many times, this many times. Me personally, I believe in the wisdom of God that no matter how many times, how many years have gone by, the message that he wants to get through to his people is still going to get through, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Like the whole Bible is about Jesus from beginning to end, whether you want to talk about uh, Adam and Eve having to shed the blood of an animal to be covered up with the animal skin in order for them to be not be ashamed. You want to talk about Noah's Ark where it said God sealed the Ark, which pretty much pointed the picture to God sealing his people. Um, when he said you sealed until the day of redemption. Like from every story points to Christ. So if you're going to sit here and tell me that you believe all this stuff, but this stuff that's making sense and lining up that was written thousands of years apart from each other doesn't make sense to you. you just telling me I want to do whatever I want to do. I don't want any accountability. I don't like the fact this Bible is telling me I can't live the way I want to live. And if that's what you want to do, just say that. You know, mm -hmm. so just say, hey, I want to do what I want to do. But to say it's not real or it doesn't make sense or translations have happened and all this kind of stuff, like this is a lame excuse. I really pray that God opens the eyes of people that can't see it. 
Because even so many times in scripture, like that's that's a reoccurring thing, a reoccurring prayer. It even says like the God of this world blinds the eyes and the minds of people. Mm. So I just pray that God opens the eyes of people because sometimes they just don't have the faith. They're not believers. They don't have this gift of faith that is given with salvation, you know, um, and the, the Bible is spiritual. So yeah. if you're trying to come at it from a logical perspective, of course, it ain't gonna make sense to you. Um, but one thing like I explained James said that I really love is that the Bible corroborates itself and the fact that God used man. So you have this creator of the universe that's all powerful that went through all of this to have a relationship with humans that he created. The fact that he even used us, to, he partnered with us to write this book. Mm is amazing and shows how much of a relationship and how much he cares about us to even provide us with this book that is very much alive in connection with him that is very much alive so it is very spiritual mm -hmm. so if you are not approaching it asking the holy spirit for help to help you understand it comprehend it because it's him who even gives you the ability to understand and comprehend it of, of course, you're not going to get it. It's it's not going to make sense. It's going to be jarbled and stuff like that. We need the the Holy Spirit to decode it. Yeah. Um, and I just think that's so beautiful. But one thing that is so amazing, like when you really start, re start researching and getting into it, like, for example, like the Bible in itself, we have this canonized holy book that we have, all of us have together. Um, and I remember the, the story of the Dead Sea Scrolls that was found some, a couple decades back or whatever. And... It is amazing that these scrolls was written way, like way back in the day. And they found these scrolls and in it was different books of the Bible. Now, mind you, it was written separate times, completely in separate areas. But one of them in particular was literally like the book of Isaiah. And it was exact to the book that we have in our canonized Bible that can only be done spiritually. How can you explain that? Right. How can you explain that other than the same God who breathed? Because in 2 Timothy 3 and 16, all scripture is breathed and given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and furnished in all good works. That spiritual, mm -hmm. that connection is just, oh. I'm glad a man wrote it actually because <laughs> me, he used men to write it because you're getting men pretty much writing down from a human perspective what it was like to walk with God and their interaction with God. Mm -hmm. Like almost like how Christ came down here as a man to show us what it meant to be led by God like as a, as a human being. Like if God were just to come down here and just write it on some tablets, you know what I'm saying, or just <laughs> like just speak directly to us, like of course through God's wisdom we probably wouldn't be able to do it, but I feel – it's cool that you have men, like you have mm -hmm. Paul writing what it was like walking with God day by day saying, I press toward the mark. He's like, who would deliver me from the body of this death? Like we need those kind of scriptures because we go through certain things in our walk and sometimes you can feel like you're not saved. Sometimes you're like, man, am I the only one struggling like this? Am I the only one going through? So now I have a human being who believed the same thing I believe walking with God, letting me know that I'm not going through anything that's not common or not mm -hmm. that's not relatable for a believer. So now I have examples of people who are doing this, going through the same thing I'm going through and how they got through it through faith, through trusting God, through pressing toward the mark, to continue in, in their stance. Like they didn't let the discouragement or the frustration or the depression or the different ranges of emotion because you see all that in Scripture. You see depression. You see discouragement. Mm. You see anger. You see all these different ranges of emotion, people who follow God, but they press through that and continue to do the will of God for their life. So I think that's important for us to see that and have those examples. I, I just love the fact that people act like this is a new question. I mean, God did write a part of the Bible. He literally wrote it himself, the, the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. wrote it on tablets, and that didn't help anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was one of the wildest group of people that ever lived, and they and God <laughs> literally <laughs> wrote it wrote down it. for them, <clears throat> yeah. and they, yeah. couldn't, they couldn't deal with it. They couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that's, that excuse means nothing to me, right? Mm -hmm. God actually literally wrote on tablets, and speaking of everything pointing to Jesus, you remember when um, you know, they got stricken with plagues and, and boils and everything because they were worshiping an idol, which we still do today, worship idols instead of God, yep. even when he writes it with his own hand? Mm -hmm. He said... Uh, uh, look to the snake on the tree, right? Anybody who looks towards that uh, will will be healed, right? That mm -hmm. was pointing to Jesus as well. Mm -hmm. That 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 if you, anyone who looks to the tree, anybody who looks to the cross, yeah. you will be saved. Like the whole thing, like Amen. it's crazy. Mm -hmm. If I, I just if you have these thoughts, 
Just read it for yourself. Mm-hmm. Don't listen to nobody tell you that it's, oh, it's this, it's that. Read it for yourself because as you read it, you're starting to hear God talk to you directly. Mm-hmm. Then I dare you to say this is just men right. waiting to me. Right, man. Let Ain't it no hit way. you. There's no way you can explain how in that verse it's directly referring to what's going to happen mm-hmm. with Jesus. You look at every, like, like Plain said, every single book. I'm not talking about like they... They retrofitted it to mean <laughs> Jesus. No, literally, as you're reading it in history mm-hmm. at the time before they even knew who Jesus was, you hear them talking about Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. unbelievable. So read it for yourself. You decide for yourself if this is just a book. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm, yeah. in, I'm in conversation mm-hmm. with a guy right now. He used to be a believer. Um, I don't want to call his name out, but he's his thing now is he's he's posting these posts where he just discredits scripture talks about how the Bible is contradictory and God this and that. And what he's doing is he's just reading scripture for face value. He's isogeting. He's he's like pulling text out of context. The, the word says study to show yourself approved. Mm-hmm. He just reading it for face value, regardless of context, culture, everything. And he's making these blanket statements about the Lord. And when I have discussion with him, it says right here that so and so and so and so. I like, bro, you gotta you can't just read that scripture. Read the ones before that and read the ones after that. Put it together like if you're going to read the text, take time to study the text. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some things are going to be, yeah, okay, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. But some scriptures you're going to have to dig deep in. I feel like, okay, is this worth digging to you? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is somebody who gave their life, it's my reasonable service. The least I can do when he gave me an open book test is mm-hmm. take time to study the open book so I can live according to his will. If you're going to grab scriptures out just to make your point and, and prove these things that are false about God, you're not even reading it right. You're not even giving yourself a fair chance. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, you're robbing yourself out one of the greatest joys you can have in this life, which is reading the word of God, being in relationship with God, and having him speak to you through the power of his Holy Spirit using his word. Here's the deal. And for anybody who's who's really struggling with this, um, you don't even you don't have to start with, the Bible is the word of God and I got to listen to everything in the Bible. Just start with Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It will be irresponsible for you before you die not to investigate somebody saying that I am God. I created you. Mm-hmm. I created you with my words. Right. That's what is claimed. That's what Jesus said. Hey, I'm God. You're going you're gonna to go your whole life without finding out if that's true or not. Mm-hmm. Right. If it's true, Jesus is the one that quoted out of the rest of the Bible. That's how we know to trust it. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. we believe what he said. You could either believe it, you could think he was lying, or you could think he was crazy, right? Once you make a decision on that, on Jesus, was he telling the truth or not? Everything else that we believe in the Bible, he quoted it, uh, in my opinion, on purpose to make sure that we knew, oh, we could trust Job. Mm -hmm. We could trust Genesis. Mm -hmm. We could trust such and such because he quoted it. Mm -hmm. So that's how we know in our hearts that we could trust the words written by men because the one that we believe is God who made the men who wrote the words, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he quoted it. He quoted himself. Mm -hmm. This is what I this is what I love about that. It's like he Jesus Christ, you know, he died on the cross like. The everything is already done. Then he gives you the the option. He like, look, the work is done. It's finished. Mm-hmm. You can follow me. Like you don't have to. Like you can you can follow me. Yeah. I got plans for you and everything. Like when it comes to your, your identity, right? It's like you're the head and not the tail. You're the lender and not the bar. Like it's, he, he's all he's doing is speaking life, speaking life, speaking life. And I love the scripture in Proverbs twenty five where it says, uh, "It's the glory of God to conceal a matter, mm-hmm. but the glory of kings to search out a matter." Mm-hmm. And it's like if I identify like I'm a king, I'm a child of God, I'm a son of God, I'm a king, right? I'm going to search out this matter. And same thing with text messages, same thing with letters, anything like that. Like for my kids. If they were to read my text messages, but they don't have a personal relationship, they're going to think I'm yelling. Mm -hmm. They're going to think I'm upset. Mm -hmm. But if you know me, Mm -hmm. like if you have a relationship with me, Mm -hmm. you're going to be able to read my text messages and understand it. And as I see you doing it, I'm going to pull you to the side. Well, this is what I meant when I when I put that exclamation point. I was excited. I wasn't angry. You know, so I just think it always boils down to the relationship aspect in the heart posture of why you're following Jesus. Yeah. Thanks. So um, one thing I wanted to add too, which was super amazing about scripture as well, because I like to look at, you know, science and all the rest of the stuff that confirms it as well. So you actually have people that corroborate scripture and that affirm scripture that were there 
but didn't have a revelation that Jesus was Lord. They mm, like, remember, Josephus, if yeah. he's coming into the city and they Hosanna, Hosanna, you got a city of people that's flooding outside trying to figure out what's going on. So you have so many accounts mm. of people that are even scribes in other cities, neighboring cities and in town, just writing different things that were happening. So you have people that weren't even Christians affirming the events that were taking place that are written in the Bible. Mm. Right. Like. Yeah. This stuff is real and true, true, true. Think, think about the level of difficulty God pulled off with making his scripture coincide with actual history. Most people's gods are m mythical. They, mm -hmm. they, they're, yep. they're describing things that don't even exist in this world. Mm -hmm. Everything that happened in Jesus' life, in, in Moses' life, in Abraham's life, they always referenced real life this was the king at that time. Mm -hmm. This was the so and so at this That's time. Mm -hmm. This was the, like he anchored it into history. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, I, we just had somebody in our chat this past week that says, "Y'all believe in this Jesus? Jesus wasn't even real. Jesus wasn't even real. There's people who don't even believe in Jesus Atheists that say have confirmed yeah. that Jesus yeah. was real. So you don't believe nothing about no history. You don't believe your your grandpa, yeah, your great grandpa yeah. was real, right? Because mm -hmm. everything we know about the past was recorded. It was written, mm -hmm. right? That's the only thing we have to go off of mm -hmm. was written records. So if you don't if you don't believe the most recorded written about record in history. <laughs> Then wh why do you believe anything? That I, I, even time, A.D., B.D., after death, before Christ? Come you're living on. living in it. You're living in I it. I think people have an issue because people want to be able to wrap their mind around everything. If they can't explain it, it must not be real. If it doesn't make sense to them, it doesn't make sense to anybody. Mm -hmm. And I said it before, I'm going to say it again. If I could totally understand God, if I can, the biggest God is, if I can grasp him and totally understand him fully in my mind, I would not worship him. Right. I'm not going to worship someone or something that I can fully understand. Mm -hmm. I'm only going to worship something that I know and recognize is higher than I, mm -hmm. that's wiser than me, that's all-knowing, that's all-sufficient, that doesn't need anything from me. But mm -hmm. he just wants to have a relationship with me. Like, I'm going to worship that. I'm not going to worship a human being. I'm not going to worship a statue that's made by men's hands. Right. I'm not going to worship another person who was born of a woman who had a, had an earthly father. You know what I'm saying? Like, I did, like... This Jesus came down here. God was his father. Like he had a virgin birth. <laughs> he was born, lived sinless, died on the cross, rose from the grave after three days, ascended to heaven, mm -hmm. sent us the Holy Spirit. This is something that none of us can do. Mm -hmm. This is why he's deserving of our worship and our praise. This is why God right now as we're talking. It's millions of billions of people in the world right now whose heart are beating right now, mm -hmm. whose nervous system are functioning. It's oceans and waves and stuff that are going right close enough to the edge without flooding the city that he's controlling all of this at one time. Like, that's why we worship God, mm -hmm. because he's huge and he's bigger than us. He's larger than us. I'm not going to worship something that's, that's, that's beneath me on the same level. And a lot of folks have a problem with that. The fact you can't explain God is why you need to worship him, not mm -hmm. why you should not worship him. But mm -hmm. you know what just came to me? That's probably why they don't. Yeah. Because I don't want to worship something that I can't control. Mm, absolutely. I don't want to worship something that I have to submit my will to. I don't yeah. want to worship something that's going to require me to be accountable. Mm. I want to do what I want to do. Yeah. I want to be my own God. Oh, don't they have that going now? That, that we're all our mm. own gods now? Christ, Christ consciousness. Mm. Yeah. And so many variations of humanism and secularism. Because it serves you.